All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, March 2nd, 2022 Planning Board meeting. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, introduction to board members. To my far left, we have Paul Amatucci, and then Jerry Graybill. We have myself, Michael LaRue, and then we have Don Ganarelli and Cameron Paladic. We also have Irish Griffin, Griffith, our code enforcement officer, and Dave Andreessen, planning and code technician. And I don't know if we have Hannah, yeah, yeah Hannah Bonine from SMPDC. All right. I'll open the first public comment. Um, this is for any items that are not on the agenda. If they are on the agenda, like if you want to speak to the public hearing, we'll wait to the public hearing and then you can speak. But if it's not particular to what's on the public hearing, then you can. All right, seeing so no one, I'll close that. And now I will open up the public hearing. Um, if you guys just want to give a brief description about it first, so then everyone's on same page and then we'll let the people speak their concerns and questions um, what I'll say before he starts talking is um, usually when there's a big group of people we try to limit it to five minutes at first and then three minutes again and once everyone speaks again you can have another five minutes and then three minutes so I'll keep track of that and let you guys know but it's just we just don't want it to run off and Okay. All right. Nice to see you guys again. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Sowery from Altus Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Steve Brown and, we and Web Ostra Inc., which was controlled by Steve Brown. Um, we just did our lovely little site walk. Uh, we walked around, saw the whole entire site, um, at least along the roadway. You saw that the roadway is, in fact, installed. Uh, everything except pavement at this point. Um, and we did notice that there might be a few deficiencies in the, uh, the dry hydrant that we discussed, so that's something that we can talk about as we go forward here. Um, I'm not opposed to adding a little bit of pavement in there as well as a turnout, as well as maintaining that dry hydrant. I think that's probably the right thing to do, given that there are already developments in the area and we're adding a lot more houses. <coughs> um, as t discussed last time, we did talk about turtles a little bit. Um, I did reach out to IFNW uh, to see if they had any more information on it. I have not gotten a response from them. Um, but the initial letter I got of them said they did not map. They have no mapped essential habitats that would be directly affected by the project. Um, so even though there may be endangered species in the area, there is no essential habitat, um, which is surprising given you know the characteristics of this wetland in here. But it's just not what they have on their books. Um, when they do get back out to me, um, I will definitely let you guys know what we need to do, if anything, on the project. Um, we do know that we need to test the road for materials and compaction. Uh, and we do know that it has to meet the town cross-section, which I know recently changed. Um, I have no doubt that we can get it knowing the condition of the road. It's seeing it before the snow, it was in really good shape. The guy knows what he's doing when it comes to roads, from what I can tell anyway. Um, and I understand that this uh, plan set will be sent out to third-party review by Underwood, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so once we get those comments back, we'll revise the plans and be happy to come back to you for final. So uh, any questions out of me? Not yet. That will be okay. old business. Fantastic. Okay. Perfect. So how we we'll, how we do this is you guys can voice your concerns, and then in old business, that's when they'll answer all your concerns. Uh, we'll write down and note everything, and then we'll just make sure that they all, if they don't have the information by next meeting, then they'll have the rest of it. So if anyone would like to come up and speak, just state your name and your address, and then... I have a couple of photographs. Also, just make sure you're talking to the mic, um, just so everyone can hear you that's on watching TV. <laughs> so this is a photograph that I took uh, you on. you got to state your name and address Oh, I'm first. sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi, board members. My name is Karen Moline. Um, I reside at 47 Alley Pond Road. And I am here to express my concerns regarding the impact of the proposed subdivision in the area of Alley Pond Road and Johnny Lane. Um, this area is a habitat for endangered species. And there is one creature that I would like to bring to your attention is the Blanding's turtle. 
According to the Maine's Wildlife Action Plan of 2015, Table 1-3, Specials of Species of Greatest Conservation Need, it is ranked at Tier 1, which is the highest priority. Um, on June 14th, I emailed Derek Yorts at the uh, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife about the sighting of two endangered species I saw on my property, a black racer snake and a Blanding's turtle. And then on June 15th, um, a friend alerted me to this turtle here. As you can see, it's right in front of uh, the excavator that Steve Brown had left at uh, the portion of the road prior to him improving it. I watched it for several hours, even recorded her laying eggs, and I notified Derek Yorks again to express my concern that the nest was at risk of being destroyed by the road development that could resume on any day without notice. The department came out and relocated eight eggs to a safe place where I was able to record the hatchlings emerging. I have a packet that shows um, contact with Derek, who has provided me with the GPS coordinates of the nest that this turtle laid, which is now in the existing road. Um, yeah. Would you like those? Yes, please. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the first is an email contact. Um, Derek Moore was the actual person from Inland Fisheries that came out to move the nest. He did that at request of Derek Yorks because Derek is so far away. Derek Moore was in Kittery. Um, all the information provided on the nest and location has just been given to the department by Derek Yorks, so the records might not be updated. Um, but I just received this email since February 28th from Derek Yorks that he has provided the information. So all of this is at risk. And sadly, the dirt road section of Alley Pond Road that was improved went directly through the nest site of the Blanding's turtle, even after I had notified the department. I am not against development as long as the proper procedures are followed. In this case, my intent is to make the board aware of the location of this recently discovered endangered turtle nest and that it be respected and protected. I request that the necessary agencies have a chance to evaluate the area, such as the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, the Maine DEP, and whether site law applies here, or the Natural Resources Protection Act, the USDA, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, pretty much anyone with valuable input to protect these animals. Atlas submitted the report by Becca Sattel, the wildlife biologist at Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. It is stated that the review is not comprehensive and recommends that, in quotes, prior to the start of any future site disturbance, we recommend additional consultation with the municipality and the other state resources, I'm sorry, other state resource agencies, including the Maine Natural Areas Protection, Maine Department of Marine Resources, the Maine Department of Environmental Protection in order to avoid unintended protected research source disturbance. Included in the packet is a form, the EHR 4-03, that may be appropriate to submit to request project evaluation for essential habitats of endangered and threatened species. In addition to the agencies that I have mentioned, I would also like to encourage the involvement of the Nature Conservancy, beginning with Habitat, Great Works, Regional Land Trust, Maine Audubon Society, and the Maine Land Trust Network to explore resources available. And within the Town of Berwick's comprehensive plan that has recently been revised, Chapter 2, section titled Critical Natural Resources, the first policy reads, maintain unique natural resources and then in their natural functions, with the action being develop and adopt a critical habitats and rare endangered species map for inclusion into a resource protection overlay zoning district. And I think this would be a perfect area to start that map. And also, I have here the two turtles on the top 
are two distinct adult turtles. One was on my property, and the one on the right is the one that laid the eggs. And you'll see the little baby turtle that I captured on camera. Um, and you'll see the Department of Inland Fisheries when we discovered the nest and we removed it and relocated it. And those are just pictures that I have there. And if you have any questions. Um, just where did they relocate them to? Do you know? De okay. Okay. And they have that GPS coordinate okay. in that email that was on the okay. first page of that packet. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? No. Should I take these down? Yeah, you can take them. Okay. Anyone else wants to come up? Um, my name is Carrie Hilliard. I am a resident of 11 Alley Pond Road. I've lived there since 2004. Um, and I just want to say tonight, this meeting was an extreme surprise to me. Um, I got a notice on my door on Tuesday evening. I work 12 hour shifts. Um, that I had a certified letter from the town. Had I not contacted one of my neighbors, I never would have known that this was occurring. Um, even though I may not be one of the abutting properties, as a resident of that road, um, and the nature of the fact that it used to be a dead-end road and how it has changed so drastically, um, I believe that it is something that is going to affect us all. Um, I have talked to other neighbors which have not had the opportunity to do research into what is going on, and I feel like this is all just kind of coming down on us really quickly, and we're not having the opportunity to voice our concerns. Um, I'm extremely glad that she was able to put this together um, because I am also concerned about those two species. I personally have seen the black racer, um, and I have seen um, multiple turtles not having identified them um, over the years down in that area, and the occurrence of sighting them in my opinion, since I've been walking those roads since 2004 has drastically decreased. Um, so I believe that the nature of that road being developed has caused a significant decline in a population of animals that are already threatened. Um, I believe that the nature of the lands also needs to be revisited because I believe some of those lands that are not designated as wetlands need to be designated or looked over again as they may have been classified as non-wetlands and they are. Um, I just think that this really needs to be revisited and that the people in the neighborhood need to have the opportunity to do their research on the project and know what's happening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, one last thing. I don't know if I mentioned this, that I still do not have my letter because I have not been able to get it. So. <laughs> Okay. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Kelsey Blindo. I'm at 17 Johnny Lane. Um, and I just kind of wanted to come up and share and second what she was saying about notification. Um, we received one letter and it was earlier in the week and this was the first time I've heard about this. Um, so sorry about kind of getting upset and everything, but um, yeah, so this was kind of just thrown on us. We love the property and love where we live um and i communicated with our neighbor uh to ask like hey are you going down and they were unable to make it due to commitments to their family um and they also never received a letter as well um so i think communication needs to be increased um yes yeah, so just communication you know if mail's the only way making sure that letter gets to that family's house um, and that person receives it because it does make a big impact for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, anyone else? Okay. Well, um, when we were at the site walk, there was a bunch of people that said that they didn't have the time, so we decided that we were going to um, keep this open, uh, the public hearing open for the next meeting.
And if um, anyone else wants to follow up with their concerns, that um, the next meeting, which will be in two weeks, they can come and still speak. Um, so if no one else, uh, you can come right back up. What is your plan? Uh, you got to come to the mic. Sorry. It's just okay. for the people at home watching. That's okay. Um, what is your mode of plan of communication to those who have not received the letter yet? Um, so the letters have already gone out. Um, I'm unaware of. If I'll speak to that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dave will speak to that. Um, but they won't get a letter for the n next one. It was only just supposed to be for the site walk and the public hearing for today. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. So we're going to keep the public hearing open. And next um, is the approval of minutes for February 16, 2023. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? Um, Cameron, you weren't here, so you're going to abstain. Yep. But um, uh, all in favor? Okay. okay. <coughs> Next is Old Business. Woodland Pond Cluster Subdivision Map R7, Lot 2, and Map R8, Lot 6-6, Altus Engineering. Once again, for the record, I'm Eric Sowry from Altus Engineering. Any questions? Uh, it's, I mean, the questions were about the, basically we're waiting to hear back from the inland fish, fish yeah. and wildlife about the turtles and the racers. Um, and there was just the concern about the wetland zoning, but that's... Yeah, the, the wetlands were delineated by a certified wetland scientist. I mean, that's... <clears throat> right, it is whatever that's what it, it is. is, is yep. At this moment, is... Ex exactly. It, it is what it is at this moment. Um, this your chair? Yep. I got a question. Okay. Uh, Eric, so I got a letter from um, the fire chief, Chief Plant. He went out and did an inspection. He said the dry hydrants... We talked about this yep. on the site walk. They were not the, the dry hydrants were dry. They <laughs> they weren't. You weren't able to suck any. He weren't yep. able to suck anything. That's not supposed them. to be the case. What's your plan for the um, the dry hydrants or the hydrants? Well, as far as I know, there's only one. Correct. Okay. Um, in this case, hearing about it two hours ago, uh, it obviously needs some sort of maintenance or potential replacement. Um, so that's something that I will definitely run by the applicant um, to see what his preference is. Um, obviously, we're going to have to go out there and take a look. We can also look at sprinklers, but I do believe um, that the dry hydrant was part of the alley pond approval as fire suppression for that neighborhood. So I, I think it has to stay, so it has to be maintained. In this case, it's, it's on Steve to do so. Right. Um, so I have absolutely no problem with adding that as a condition to the, to the plan. But that's an easy fix. I mean, it's, it's dry hydrant. It's not very complicated. Um, okay. Obviously, the pond is plenty large enough to give you fire suppression all day and night. I mean, that's right. that's a huge pond. It's a huge source of water. Um, so fixing that is not going to be an issue at all. Okay. So. Yeah, it, just as a follow-up on that, as we took a look uh, about what's paved, what's not paved, it would make good sense to me, and I, I throw this out as a suggestion right now, and we can look at it when we're going to, uh, to make final commitment of, of, of the conditions, but uh, I would say that the road must be paved to that that dry yeah. hydrant. I, I agree with you completely. I, I just seeing the fact that there's a snowbank right here, it doesn't do anybody good if the house is on fire in the middle of the winter. So, so it's, it's a condition right. of approval? It, well, I'm going to put it on the, the plan revision that's going to come out okay. um, once I hear, uh, get back comments from Underwood. Okay. okay. Right. So. If you have it on the plan, then we don't have to put it Ex as exactly. a condition. Exactly. Exactly. Correct. And, so. uh, yeah, it, it just makes sense. We have some heavy fire equipment yeah. and uh, uh, on the gravel road, which yeah. may or may not be plowed, yeah. is going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then also while we were at the site walk, another issue was the um, traffic going past the fire uh -huh. hydrant. Yep. So if, if they could put a gate. Um, I, I think that's, hearing the concerns from your butters, I'm, I'm shocked to hear that it's that bad. So yeah. we definitely need to do something about it. So I think that um, adding a gate there is going to deter vehicular traffic. Yeah. I do think that developing, developing this 
as proposed is going to deter people going down there a little bit further. But if you've got an open road that's not paved off into the woods, people are going to go back there without a doubt. So yeah. having yeah, a gate especially there. Especially if it's not posted. Absolutely. I mean, then, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, talking to, to Troy, uh, the realtor, who's really the, the conduit to Mr. Brown, Steve owns a lot of land. He doesn't want to be the guy to post all of it, and then nobody can go out and use it. So he's kind of caught in that sort of you know, that, that area where he wants to be a good neighbor and let people you know, go on his land and hunt and whatnot. But also you've got this problem where uninvited guests can just show up. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the gate's going to deter you know, at least the vehicular traffic, okay. uh, which will be a start. Otherwise, they've got to walk in from who knows where. Right. At that point, nothing's going to stop them. Jerry? Just a question on the gate. Might be more for you, Eric. Does the gate have to have a toss box to let, in case there's a Well, fire? it would be after the it fire. After the, yeah. well, I know, but yeah. I'm talking about if there's a fire out there. In the that area. would be something I would defer to the fire chief for. Yes, um, you know I'm getting that. I, right. I know what you're yeah, saying. Okay. If there's a fire in the woods because somebody does walk around uh -huh. the gate, right. um, how are they going to get there? To get right. the Adding a Knox box is easy. Yeah, that's, right. that's a yeah. piece of cake. So, yeah. That's, okay. that's um, a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. I just would defer to the fire department on that one. Right. Okay. They should weigh in. We recommend that. If you're going yeah. to uh, reach out, um, can I ask you what type of lock it is? Because certain fire departments have certain numbers, so we need to know that information so it ends up on the plan. Yeah, I can ask him. Um, and, like, I have another question. Okay. So maybe Irish can ask this question, but uh, I'll ask it for her. Mm -hmm. She put notices out there. Yep. They were removed within 12 hours. I have no knowledge of that, and I can't speak to it, and neither can any of the team, unfortunately. Right. Um, I can't stop people from tearing stuff down. Uh, from what we know, it wasn't the applicant. Um, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to take this opportunity, since I know that this is a publicized public Correct. meeting, yes. to just remind people that a posting that is put up by a town official, such as a stop work order, is actually a removal of that. Can be uh, You can be fined as a misdemeanor uh, type C crime. So when I post things, please keep your little fingers to yourself and let me take them down when it's time. So just in case whoever took them down happens to be watching, no more touching my things. <laughs> one, one question, because I don't want a misdemeanor. Um, obviously, to find out if the road passes town spec, we're going to do some testing. Yes. Is that, is that considered work? You can Perfect. do testing. You cannot do any form of improvement. Perfect. No more hauling in gravel. Don't be yep. grading. Don't be pa absolutely do not be paving. Yep. That'll make my head explode. Um, but testing is required by the town, yep. so yes, you can do that. You okay. just can't do anything to further the project Perfect. as far as building. So those culverts, for example, that he needs to replace, that's on hold. Yep. That has to be on hold until you get approval for the project yep. through the exactly. town. Exactly. Okay, the next one was a concern about the letter of noti notification to Butters. If you want to speak to that, Dave, you said you had answered I mailed them out Tuesday. I sent them certified mail. I spent eight dollars and seventy cents per letter. I mailed out uh, 30, 30 letters, so I spent over two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I can't control how quickly the post office gets it there. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we've had a couple snow days where I haven't gotten mail at all, mm -hmm. regular mail. I, I really don't have an answer for it but the fact that we're going to keep the public hearing open and this group of people the neighbors are already talking get more people involved mm -hmm. get them out here to the meetings yeah. that that's what i'm going to tell you um i i really don't i, I really don't have an explanation i i don't want to blame it on the mail service right so to clarify, that was the 20, Tuesday the 21st, okay. not this past, not Tuesday, two days That's ago, correct. Tuesday, Tuesday the 21st. Tuesday the 21st. Just want to clarify that for the record. Yes. Okay. I'd also like to point out that these notices only go to a butters. Yes. Typically, it won't go to the entire neighborhood. Well, it's In, in this particular case, you went above and beyond and went Well, it's, it's only supposed to go out for 200 feet, yeah. but I, 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 usually, I typically that. do 300 feet because yeah. I knew this was going to be... Um, a contentious one uh, because there hasn't been any development out there so I'm, I, I extended it a little bit further that's why um, where was the 
Where is he? Oh, never mind. Oh, no, that's why you got the notice. Well, no, no. No, he's not here. No. He was Mike. at the site well. Yeah. Mike. Sorry. <laughs> Mike Sicko. Got yeah. the, the other gentleman. Yeah. Sicko, yeah. who lives on Long Swamp Road, was yeah. like, I got a notice and I don't live within. I'm like, yeah, because you live like 275. But yeah, I did 300 feet. Okay. And may I ask, um, and I'm sorry to ask you this, I'm sure it's in the information that was presented, but I didn't get a chance to check between the sidewalk and now. Um, when was the wetland study done that you have? Wetlands to were delineated October 2022. Okay, so, so those were recent. Yeah, that, that delineation is good for five years. Okay. I just didn't know if it was, you know, two or three years no, ago. No, no, that's, that's very recent. Yeah, that's as recent as yeah, it was. It was get. right <laughs> after you came in for a preliminary. It, exactly. That, um, Karen came in and voiced her concern yep. about that then, and I know you guys yep. were on top of but it. But believe me, I'd like it to be less wet, but it is what it is. <clears throat> also, as the inspector, I, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't we turn it over to Hannah too to see if Hannah's got anything? Okay. Hang Hannah, on one, one second. I, yeah. I just, just for the abutters and people in the neighborhood, since there's only one notice that will go out, if one of you wants to do a little bit of your own due diligence, make a copy of it and say new meeting, public hearing on this date, mm -hmm. and drop it in mailboxes or on front doors in your neighborhood, then you'll let people know in the area what's going on and a copy of the public notice and the date. So that way, people in the neighborhood are are advised. Uh, since you know, according to our regulations, we send it out ten days ahead, certified mail, two hundred and fifty dollars, whatever, and that's it. And uh, that's that's the way the process works. So if you understand the process and you know that there's going to be uh, other people interested, I would suggest you do a little copying and a, a little footwork to let people know. Great idea. Yeah. All right, Hannah, do you have anything else to add? Um, not, not at this time, since we haven't gotten any additional information since the last meeting, aside from the dry hydrant, and that has been covered. Um, uh, can, uh, Eric, sorry, can you reiterate, um, your communication with IFNW, um, did you say that you have or have not actually communicated with somebody there yet? We reached out to them, and I have a letter from them dated November 30th, um, and okay. second paragraph down it says, our department has not mapped any essential habitats that would be directly affected by your project. goes on okay. to talk about the potential species in the area, one of, one yeah. of which is the Blandings. Um, and it's the, at the bottom it says, if these habitats are present in the project area, we recommend that they be avoided and adequately buffered with a 250-foot undisturbed intact vegetated buffer. That's obviously okay. not the case because the road's already there and it does continue on past. In, in my estimation, not being a wildlife biologist, the best turtle to have that's back in here where you've got the pond and the sort of swampy area. That road past the hydrant has been there for 20 years. Um, so that's not going to change, obviously. But I did reach out to uh, Derek York at IFNW uh, once again via email, but I have not heard back from him. And that was last week after the prior meeting. So okay. once, once we get that, that may start another round of, of conversation with, with IFNW. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would definitely, um, not that you wouldn't provide, but provide that information you get from oh, Derek. Yeah. If you can, Absolutely. Um, yep. So we can consider a, a field study there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, if he walks the site, he's going to find turtles. The guy's the guy's good. Okay. Yeah. So I, I walked the site with him in Sanford, and he found a little frog like that big, and we were walking through bush like about this high. He just found it. Okay. Okay. He just has a radar for these things, so he's he's the best. Um, so it seemed like a field study would probably yep. be if, if he if he thinks it's warranted, absolutely. Okay. And he he'll be the one to do it. So okay. he'll he'll walk around the site and make written recommendations if necessary. Okay. Mm. You have any other? Let it come for later for information. Okay. All right, and then actions tonight, Hannah. What so, Hannah, we we approved the application complete. Um, we did the site walk tonight. We did the first public hearing. We're going to have a second public hearing in two weeks. What action should we take tonight, if any? Um, I would say none. Um, until your public hearing is closed and you're ready to make a preliminary approval, there aren't any actions to take. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Can I ask one more thing? Yeah. Uh, Hannah, are you going to send out the plans and application materials to under what I guess would be the third party, or is that something you want me to do? Uh, we can do that. We're still in the process of getting that situated, but we okay. will send it out when we get it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be sending it out, okay. and Hannah and I will work on it together. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. Two weeks from today? Yep. You got it. What's the date on that? Sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. Three sixteen twenty three. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. No new business. I'll open up the second public comment. This is open to any non-agenda items. Okay. I'll close that. Next is informational items. Jerry you said you got something. No. Nope. I just want. I think from our standpoint. The Thursday before Dave mailed out the notices to the public was when we said that we would have the site walk. Yeah, when we when we set the schedule, now. so he that. mailed them out when he was supposed to. Yep. Like he said, you know, I'm not getting mail either, so I, that may be part of the problem. Yep. Like I didn't receive a notice for the public hearing for the issues across the street from me. Yeah, for Correct. The meeting. Until it was yeah. over. Right. So, um, it's yeah. No, I, I agree, Jerry. Um, but we're following we, the process. Yeah. We're following the process. The, the, the neighbors are going to let their other neighbors know they can still come to the public hearing because right. yep. we left the public hearing open. Yep. And that's why I always like to leave the public hearing open for an extra meeting, especially not if you have a. A contentious no, if there's concerns. If there's, if there's concerns, concerns, we need to have these answers Correct. for them. And if there's any more concerns that come up, we need Great. to have yeah. I mean, the, the, the only question I have based on that issue is, is it allowable or can we say we voted that Thursday to do it today? Can we go two weeks to make sure everybody's got time, you know, two weeks longer? In other words, or does it have to be within that window? You know, I'm getting that, Dave. You mean, can we mail the letters can earlier? Can mail them earlier? No, no not mail no, them no, earlier. No, but no. date it later. So yeah. that would just be us scheduling the um, the public hearing at Sitewalk later. Later. Um, the the procedure allowed? and policy is just the minimum of 10 days. Yes. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. So I just yeah. want There's everybody no, to understand yeah. that we're following a process, and that's what happened. Yep. Yeah. You know, from that standpoint. Yep. Okay. Um, is it possible to speak to that? Nope. Okay. Not right now. You can speak to us when we're done with the meeting. Well, yeah. 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 Um, so, speaking of which, you guys are going to be here for this. I have um, something. It's from the state of Maine. It's the um, it is the planning and land use amendments moratoriums. There was a lot of discussion about a moratorium, and let me go on record by saying that. Whatever's happening on Route 4 with the gas station, I did not say that there was a gas station going in on Route 4. Okay? I did not say it. And I'm going to stick to that. Okay? I know a lot of people in town, including you guys, residents, and people who work for the town say, well, there's a gas station going in on Route 4 just past Blackberry Hill Road. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't gotten an application. I will right. be the first person to get the application. They will call me and they will come in with their application. Okay. We had a lengthy, lengthy meeting about this and many, many emails were circumvented me. I don't know why. Maybe because I was previously on the planning board, but they circumvented me. I'm not going to throw names out there, but... I was a little bit irate that uh, one of the members of the planning board still refuses to talk to me about this issue and has gone up to everybody, including the town manager, talking about this issue. Not talking about me, but talking about this issue. So what I have here is the moratorium. Okay, The moratorium would be good for 180 days. So if you wanted to put a moratorium on a gas station going in anywhere in town, if somebody came in here and said, I'm gonna put a gas station in, it would have to get 
is approved by the select board. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, you can't do a moratorium. The, the planning board, the select board has to do it. Right. And it's oh. only good for 180 days, and then they can extend it for another 180 <laughs> days. The only thing we can do is recommend it if correct yeah. now recommend it I can tell you this um, it's not going to go over no, no not with, with the select, select board yeah, it's not going to go over meeting, they, yeah, they said that it like was of no interest yeah. so you could just this is what we have to and, deal with and that only is to update our policies for the land use ordinance Correct. and it's yeah so it has it's tough because so, it has to get voted in at that time and right so now that i said that i'm gonna i'm gonna start smiling again <laughs> i'm gonna be nice again yeah because i'm a nice guy um but i just wanted to put that out there um the other thing is we have uh uh yeah we're gonna have pretty packed uh, agenda next next not only do we have these guys here uh, we have uh, Altus engineering um, I got two applications today wait for me oh no Altus I'm Altus Altus there's an Altus and an Altus yes Altus yeah okay yeah all right. um, <laughs> huh Ambit? No, 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 no. I got Dave, another app. I think it's Atar. 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 There we go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the reason why we do that is so yep. we end up in the front of the phone book. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we did it. I got, an, I got two applications. <laughs> so, um, yeah, right. 25 years ago, we started the company. Like, so, this next meeting on the 16th is going to be, it's gonna be busy. pretty busy. Yeah. Okay. So, you're going to put us first, right? You gotta go reverse order alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So that that's all that I have. Okay. Do you anyone else have any? No. Okay. Yeah. Irish, do you have any? No. Okay. Um, next is the adjournment. Thank you guys. Thanks, okay. guys. Appreciate it. I make Thank a you. motion that we adjourn this meeting of the planning board. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you.